Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you shut off your hot and cold water supply and remove the drain hose from the wall. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer spin tube thrust washer. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's going to take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new spin tube thrust washer. The spin tube thrust washer is mounted on the transmission shaft right below the spin tube. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's lost or damaged. In order to change the part, we have to take the washer apart. First thing we're going to do is go around back. Now that we're around back, we're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out when we take the hoses off. Make sure you label the hoses, which one's hot and which one's cold, so we don't mix them up when you put them back on. To get the hose off, we're going to use our pliers to loosen them up. Once you have it loose, you can just unscrew it by hand. Now that we have the fill hoses off, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the console down. You don't have to take them out all the way, you just have to loosen them up enough so that they come out of the cabinet. Once you have the screws loose, you can push the console forward a little bit to unlock it and then rotate it back up and out of the way. Then we can come around front and we have to take out these two gold locking tabs that hold the cabinet to the back wall. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and just push down on it. Then you can flex forward so the clip comes out of the cabinet. Then you can unhook it from the back wall and pull it off the machine. Once you have the locking clips off, we can take the lid switch wiring harness off. There's a little locking tab that you can lift up on. You can use a flathead screwdriver if it's tight. You can pull the wiring harness out and set it aside. To get the cabinet off, we're going to lift up the lid and grab the lip of the opening right here and then put our foot down at the bottom of the machine and tilt the cabinet towards you until it's about a 45 degree angle or so. Then you can slide it back and off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off, we can take the agitator out. We're going to take off the cap first. If you have a fabric softener dispenser here, you can just pull up on it and pull it off. We're going to take a flathead screwdriver and put it in this notch right here and turn it to pop the cap off. Once you have it free, you can pull it off and set it aside. Now we can reach in and pull out the inner cover. If it's in there tight, you may have to reach in with a pair of pliers to break it free. Once you have it free, you can just lift it out and set it aside. To get the agitator bolt out, we're going to use a 7 16 inch socket with the extension and a ratchet. You may have to reach in and hold the lower half of the agitator to break the bolt free. Once you have the bolt out of the threads, we're just going to reach in and lift the agitator up and pull it out of the washer. Now that we have the agitator out, we can go down below and take off the water pump. To get the pump off, we have to remove the two clips that lock it onto the motor. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to help lift them off. Once you have a release from the pump, we're going to turn it. 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor. The bottom one comes out the same way. Now we can take off the pump. If when you're pulling on it, it doesn't come off, it may be leaking and the shaft is rusted to the pump. So you may have to get behind it with a flathead screwdriver to get it off. Once you get it off, you want to look at the back and if you see any evidence of it leaking, you want to change the pump too. Once you have it off, you can swing it out of the way so we can take the motor off. Now we can take out the wiring harness to the motor. It's got a locking tab on it. I'm just going to get behind it with a flathead screwdriver. Once you have it released, you can pull the wire harness off. Now we can take the motor off. Just like the pump, there's a couple clips we have to release. They have some retaining screws in there. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take the screws out first. Now that we have the screws out, 
We're going to use our flathead screwdriver to help pop the clips off. We're going to take the lower one off first. Now we can take out the upper motor clip. You want to make sure you support the motor so it doesn't fall as you're taking this out. And we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to pop it free. Once you have it free, we're going to drop the motor down a little bit and turn the clip 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor mounting plate. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. And we can grab the motor with both hands and lift it out. Now that we have the motor out of the way, we can reach in and take out any grommets that might be stuck on the motor mounting plate and the motor mounting clip. Once you have the grommets off the mounting plate, you can put them out on the motor so you don't lose them. Now we can remove this wire harness retainer. It clips the wire harness up to the transmission. We're going to use our needle nose pliers to compress it and pull it out. Once you have it released, you can just set it out of the way. Now we can lay the washer on its back. We're going to carefully rotate the console over. And as we lower it down onto the back, we're going to put a piece of wood underneath it so it doesn't lay completely flat on the floor and damage the water inlet valve fittings. It is kind of heavy, so if you need to, you can get somebody to help you. Now we're back at the bottom of the washer. We're going to use a half inch socket with a ratchet and an extension to take out the three bolts to hold the transmission on. Now that we have the bolts out, we can reach in and pull the transmission out. To get the transmission out, you can just pull it straight down. If it's stuck, you may have to wiggle a little bit, but once it comes free, you should be able to pull it out and set it on the ground. Now that we have the transmission out, we have access to the spin tube thrust washer. It just sits on top of the clip, so we can just lift it off the shaft. Here's the old spin tube thrust washer next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. When you put the new spin tube thrust washer on, you want to make sure that these little locating tabs go into the openings. You don't want them on this part right here, otherwise the thrust washer won't sit down low enough. To put it on, all you have to do is line it up with the shaft and slide it down and make sure it seats all the way down. Once you have it on, we can put the transmission back into the washer. Before you put the transmission back in, we have to turn the basket drive assembly so this cam is at 12 o'clock. As you turn it, you only want to go counterclockwise. Make sure you push up on it to make sure that the brakes are all the way up and the transmission seats properly. To put the transmission back in, we're going to turn the clutch so the spring is over here at this position opposite the motor mounting plate. We don't want it to hit the cam and when we lift the transmission in, that'll put it down at 6 o'clock so it doesn't interfere with the basket drive assembly. To put the transmission in, we're just going to lift it up and slide the shaft in. If you have to, you may have to shake it and wiggle it to get it to go all the way up. Once you have it in place, you can make sure that the transmission goes into the three mounting spots where the bolts go. Once you have the transmission in place, we can grab the half inch socket and ratchet and put the bolts back in. Now that we have the transmission mounted, we can put the washer back up on its feet. To put the washer back on its feet, remember it's kind of heavy, you can get somebody to help you if you need to. I'm just going to grab it by the back panel and carefully lift it up. Once you have it on the feet, you can flip the console back over and take the wood block out. Now that we have the washer back on its feet, we can hook up the wire harness holder to the transmission. All you have to do is line it up and snap it into place. Now the way the wiring harness clip in, we're going to put the lower mounting clip for the motor in. All you have to do is stick it in and turn it 90 degrees. Once you have it in place, you can just leave it sit until we put the motor in. Before we put the motor back in, you want to look at the coupler. The rubber part 
gets old and worn out, like this one where the hole's starting to elongate, and you know this is going to fail pretty soon. So you might as well change it while you have the motor out. Also, you want to line up this hole at the 12 o'clock position because we're going to put the other side of the coupler with the pin at 12 o'clock. So when we slide the motor in, it goes in nice and easy. Now we're going to turn the motor around and lift it up so we can put it into place. Once you have it slid all the way in, we're going to hold it for a second while we grab the upper mounting clip. We're going to drop the motor down a little bit just like when we took it out. And we're going to put the upper clip into the motor mounting plate and turn it 90 degrees and then lift the motor up and snap it into place. Once you have the upper one in, the motor will be supported so we can reach down and put the lower one in. To put the lower one on, all you have to do is lift it up and snap it into place. Once you have them both on, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws back in. Once you have the screws back in, we can reach around and grab the wire harness and reconnect it to the motor. All you have to do is line it up so it locks into place and you get a good connection. To put the pump on, we're going to lift it out and you're going to have to turn it over and make sure that the flats on the water pump line up with the flats on the motor shaft. If not, you may have to rotate it a little bit so that when you turn the pump over, they line up and you can push it all the way on. Once you have it all the way on, we can secure it with the mounting clips. To put the clips back on, we're going to push them into the motor and turn them 90 degrees so they lock in. Once you have it locked in, we can lift it up so it locks the pump to the motor. The upper one goes on the same way. Now that we have it installed, we can put the agitator assembly in. To put the agitator in, we're going to dump out the agitator bolt. We're going to use the 7 16 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension. We're going to put the agitator bolt into the socket and then we're going to lift it up into the agitator and make sure it goes into the hole. Once you have it lined up, you can lower the agitator assembly down into the washer. Once you have it down all the way, you can tighten down the agitator bolt. Once it starts to get tight, you're going to have to hold the lower agitator while we tighten it down. In order to make it easier to put the cap into the agitator, we're going to take some liquid soap and put it around the seal. This will help it go down in there and slide into place. If it gets hung up, you can turn the cap in order to get it to seat down in there properly. Once you have the soap on it, you can put it into the agitator. To put it in, all you have to do is set it down into the agitator. You want to make sure you get it all the way down and it's seated properly. Once you have it in there, we can put the agitator cap on. Whether you have the agitator cap or the fabric softener dispenser, all you have to do is line it up with the upper agitator and snap it back into place. Once you have it on, we can put the washer cabinet back on. In order to put the cabinet back on, we're going to line it up at the same angle we took it off. And we're going to hook the lip underneath the front. And we're going to set the cabinet down so that the tabs come through the holes in the cabinet. Once you have the cabinet set down, you can pull on the back panel to make sure that the plastic piece goes into the cabinet. Once you have both sides in, we can put the retaining clips on. To put the clip on, we're going to hook it onto the back panel and clip it onto the cabinet. Once you have this side on, we can do the other side. Once you have both clips in, we can grab the lid switch wiring harness and plug it back in. 
can only go on one way. Just make sure it goes on all the way and locks in. Once you have the wire harness attached, we can close the console. Slowly let the console down and get behind it so we can line up the locking tabs. And Once you have them in on each side, you can pull back a little bit to lock them into place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. To put the fill hoses back on, we're just going to line them up and make sure that they go on straight. You don't want to cross thread them. Once you have them snug, you can grab our pliers and tighten it down so you get a good seal and there's no leaks. Now that we have the fill hoses back on, you can plug the washer back in, turn the water back on, hook up the drain hose, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.